Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And in this episode, we go to the trenches, in the trenches, and we go right to the middle of the trenches. Ted Karras, center for the Cincinnati Bengals. Ted Karras has a great story. Um, his his career is, has been remarkable. Two Super Bowls with the New England Patriots and uh, played with the Miami Dolphins as well. Also, the Cincinnati Bengals, he's had a great run of quarterbacks that he's been snapping that football to on a regular basis. Every single play, the center and the quarterback both handle the football. The only two players on the field that handle the football every single snap. Ted Karras, not only a great player, great leader, big, big influence in the locker room for the Cincinnati Bengals, big, big positive influence on the locker room. You're going to like Ted Karras. Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics. And we have the man, very, very popular with Bengal fans. When we have Ted Karras as a guest, people perk up, people listen. Everybody, big attention here. We're coming to you from our studios at uh, First Star Logistics as always, but can't wait to get up to speed, get caught up with with Ted Karras. And Ted, how's the off season gone for you, my man? Oh, it's been great. Thanks so much for having me on again, Dave. I think this is like my fourth or fifth appearance. I'm very honored that I get to be in the trenches this much with you. So I'm glad to be here. Appreciate that very much. So what have you been doing? What what what'd you do in the off season with the family? Do you have any fun? Did you go uh, spend a little vacation time somewhere? Well, my wife and I uh, live in Fort Lauderdale in the off season. Uh-huh. And uh, really, we treat it like one big staycation. We took a few trips. Um, around florida ended up going to maui for the nfl pa conference but nice other than that um you know we just relax at home and and really just start the prep for for a big big year here in 2023 so you recharge the battery and and all that good stuff and uh, you're a high energy guy there's no question about it and man you were ready to roll you can't, can't come back to cincinnati for the for the first gathering of, uh, of of guys, and I always love that man. I always love to see everybody catching up with each other in the locker room. It just shows the bond, you know, that that uh, you, you players have, and it, it's it, it's a very special bond in this Bengals locker room, isn't it? It is. We have such uh, amazing guys, which is a testament not only to the guys themselves, but the uh, the front office putting together a group of of young men as as high caliber as, as our teammates. Um, and spring is amazing because. There's no pressure. You know, we're just running, we're lifting. There's no looming game. Um, and, you know, it's really just a chance. I think it's one of the biggest times that we do bond because we you can get together. It's it's kind of low stakes ball. It's not even ball, really. It's just running and lifting and and getting around each other and everyone's in town. And uh, it, it's really it is a lot of fun. So you had a first opportunity to, to uh, catch up with Orlando Brown and Cody Ford couple of big uh, Oklahoma Sooners, man. Couple, <laughs> couple of big boys added to that offensive line. What's your first impression of those two men? Man, well, like you said, big um, and yeah. high energy, too. I think Orlando is going to be an amazing addition to our room and our team culture as an offense and just overall as a team. Um, and, yeah, like, like you said, big. I mean, I'm looking around. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in a huddle, huddle with Alex Kappa, Cordell Volson, Orlando Brown, talking to Frank Pollock. I mean, I, I'm the little guy in that scenario. So I'm a, I, feel, I feel nice and protected with the guys around me. I'll tell you, it's a, it, that, that's a big group, that, that offensive line. I mean, Volson, Kappa, those are, those are big body guards. There's no, no two ways about that. And now these, uh, these tackles that you got, Ted, it's, the, game, the game is crazy. I mean – how it's changed it, it it really is and the thing these guys are so big but yet they're so athletic you know i mean it, it it really is amazing nutrition training all that stuff is just off the charts it's an honor to you know play a sport with the biggest baddest dudes in the world and the <laughs> nfl the nfl is a collection of all of them so you got to be at your very best though because guys like that'll will kick your ride out if you let them yeah there's no two ways about it so w- when you Take me through the process of the season ends. What what's the off season like? Or the stages of it for Ted Karras? Do you do you review the season in your head, or do you still watch tape? Do you do you think 
uh, oh boy, you know, here, here's my overall evaluation of how the season went as a team individually. What, what's that process like for you? Or do you shut it down right away and say, you know what, that's in the past and I'm, I'm moving on. How do you handle it, Ted? I think there's some, there's some quick reflections right, right when it's over. Um, but you're not lingering on that. It's time to move on. There's nothing you can do about last season. Um, except improve upon the things you do. And that, that process kind of starts now. So Cordell has been coming over and we've been kind of watching the games in sequence just to kind of get ourselves in a refreshed mode with the language, with the operations, with observations we see of ourselves and our teammates and kind of just making little notes now of things for when we do, you know, roll the ball out there uh, next month, just to have in the back of our head of what we want to do differently as far as what we see on film come week right now, we've only made it through four games. So, you know, we want to start faster this year. We've kind of pinpointed a few things that we think can help us start faster. Boy, Cordell, it's a, it's a scenario where now he's got Orlando Brown on, on his left side. Um, he's a Super Bowl champion, uh, most recent Super Bowl champion. And then on the other side, he's got you a two time Super Bowl champion, at the right guard position is Kappa. He's a Super Bowl champion. And the thing is, three of the five starting offensive linemen for the Cincinnati Bengals are Super Bowl champions, you being a multiple Super Bowl champion, with different teams. I mean, obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs, they're going to have multiple offensive linemen who won a Super Bowl. They just won it last year. But the Bengals have put together, uh, by free agency, you know, three different – or three guys that have – have tasted the sweet nectar of a Super Bowl victory with three different franchises. That's pretty amazing. That is. And, um, you know, it'll be nice to reflect on that when we're done here. But the goal is to get an orange one. And that's what everyone's thinking about. Yep. Um, and I hope everyone's thinking about that. It's really all I can think about um, is to, you know, be the guys to get it done in Cincinnati. And that's where we're working towards. We've had a great week one here. We, you know, we have one more day, but – there's a high energy in our locker room. There's great attendance. Guys are, are ready to go and understand the competition that awaits us. And we're preparing our bodies to be able to meet that challenge head on. So how important are, is this week in the next few weeks? I mean, the, the next month and a half, how important is it to the formation of the chemistry of the football team? I think the chemistry is the biggest part. Obviously there's the physical aspect of, of, you know, being in a physical position to perform your job in this league, which is very tough and demanding. But to be around each other in a higher volume setting after we've taken a, a four month break, and then you get another break in the in the in the in the summer too. So to develop relationships, start getting to know guys. There's a lot of new faces every year in the NFL to assimilate them into the team, onboard them into the culture, uh, and then you know keep pushing the culture forward and then you get a break and then you're six months, you're eight months. If you're champions, uh, you know, every day with each other. So this is a great base to lay with a break in between before we really dive into an everyday situation. So offensive line um, chemistry is huge there. I mean, it's, it's five playing like one. There, there are no two ways about that. And, and the, the more you can get familiar with each other, uh, off the football field, as well as on the football field and rep, uh, repetition after repetition of, of uh, it breeds comfort level. There's no question about it. The language, hear it over and over again. And you're already there, but Orlando, you know, is, is not there. Cody's not there. Other guys, you know, are not quite there yet. That That's all uber important at this time of year to get that process going, right? It is. And the, the great thing about it being April 19th is it's not a huge rush. We can take right. our time, really install it, you know, the way that Frank wants it, Zach wants it, Coach Callahan wants it, and really lay, lay a great base so that when we come into camp, we can, you know, be very smooth. We're probably going to repeat the installs anyway. It'll be the second time we hear the information this year, which is always very helpful to, to reinforce the tenants, the rules, the structures of the plays and get everyone on the same page. You know, when I, when I was looking around the locker room um, and looking at the offensive line, you know, specifically, everybody came back in, in really good shape. I mean, you know, nobody let themselves go. Everybody's been putting forth uh, some discipline, you know, in terms of, Hey, 
you know, don't want to take a step back here and then have to recover and, and get to a point where I should be. Everybody's starting from a very good starting point, it looks like to me. I think everyone knows what's at stake and the opportunity that we have um, to, to be very successful and ultimately hopefully win a championship. And they understand what the competition is going to be in individual position rooms. It's a very talented team. This is a team that we need to be at the forefront, uh, especially on offense of, of the league. So guys take that very seriously. They know that if they, we realize this is a performance business and if you do not perform well, uh, you'll be out of it. And so that's always in the back of my mind when I'm training uh, in March and April and, and February um, to know that, you know, someone, someone else is training and trying to, you know, perform this job better than I am. So we better not let that happen. I know that uh, Joe Burrow, always works to have great relationships with his offensive linemen, and he's smart to do that. Um, every great quarterback that has enjoyed success in the National Football League, that's paramount. I mean, that that has to happen. And during the course of the year, you guys spend a ton of time together on the road. I mean, Joe Burrow and his offensive line, you guys are inseparable, man, and I love it. It's great. I mean, that's how it was with – uh, when we uh, we were playing with Kenny Anderson or the group that was playing with Boomer Esiason, I mean, and, and enjoyed success, get, getting to a Super Bowl, not quite winning it, um, but having great seasons. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It is. And he's a great leader, and he has great relationships, not only with just the O-line, but everyone in the building. Yeah. Um, he Everyone knows it's Joe's team. We all know that. We're here to – you know, my role is to help Joe make him feel comfortable with the operation of the offense – deliver the ball to him and then, you know, keep a, keep a buffer in front of his, in front of, you know, where he, the spot where he wants to throw. So we know that, you know, Joe's, Joe's, this is Joe's team and hopefully this is Joe's year and our year. And that's what we're working towards. And, and he does a great job of, of, you know, communicating his expectations, uh, not only as a football player, but as a friend and he's a great leader very excited to be back. Um, been very, very lucky in my career with quarterback play. But uh, Joey B is, is as good as it gets. You know, you can never hope for anything more than that. So the right tackle position is going to be very, very competitive. There's, there's no question about it. And uh, Jonah Williams, one of the guys in there in, in, in the competition at that right tackle position. Now, obviously, Jonah was frustrated, um, and, but it, ha it happens in the National Football League. It's it's, it's a competitive world. There's no two way. You can't take anything for granted in the National Football League in terms of what might take place from one day to the next. Have you had an opportunity to catch up with Jonah at all? How's he doing? And you as a leader of the offensive line, I mean, how, how do you feel you can uh, help him if, if, if you feel like you need to at all? I've talked to him a few times over the offseason. I know that um, obviously things didn't work out the way he wanted to so far this year. Right. Right. I completely respect his decision to do what's right for him in his career. I do hope that at some point there can be a reconciliation with the uh, franchise and Jonah because he's a very talented player. And I think that he would I know that he would help us win a lot of football games. Um, but again, this is a business that you have to you have to look out for yourself ultimately. Um, and it, it, like we said earlier, it's a performance business and you got to have your own back and he's doing what he thinks is right for him and his family. And I respect that, but I do hope uh, that there can be a, uh, a coming together. And I, I, I do hope to see him in stripes this year. Hey, Dave Lapham here to tell you about one of Cincinnati's fastest growing companies, First Star Logistics. They're currently drafting freight brokers to join their sales team. Apply at firststarlogistics.com. First Star Logistics, opportunity knocking. Definitely. No question about that. Um, when, when you look at, at what your strengths are as an offensive line, the additions that were made to the offensive line, do you, don't, you don't anticipate anything. I mean, these are, these are fits. It's like I'm not going to have to change things because of like Orlando Brown or whatever the case may be. I mean, you, you guys have an idea and you guys have a mindset and a philosophy of what you can do and how you're going to get it done. And, um, Frank Pollock obviously is as good as there is in terms of uh, structuring blocking patterns and schematics to fit his personnel, right? I totally agree. I think the whole offensive staff is uh, 
very, very fluid and very knowledgeable in how to utilize their personnel to the best of their of our abilities. I think obviously this offense is run through number nine, yeah. followed by the trio of wide receivers that we have. Um, right. So we know that we will be dropping back and pass blocking, and that's obviously going to be a huge priority. But if we can relieve some of the necessity to always pass by a, a, by strengthening our run game. Not that I thought the run game was bad last year, but if we can if we can keep that on an ascending track and be very efficient in our run game and and and, and make people play us, you know, have to play the run in sub defense, which we get pretty much ninety percent of the time, is going to be a big advantage for us moving forward. When you reflect back, Ted, um, what what areas? Did you think offensively, particular, particular, I'm talking not necessarily about schematic play selection, but areas of the field, uh, goal line, red zone, when you're backed up, do you feel like you handled all aspects of it pretty darn well, or was there one that needs more work than any other, or how do you feel about any of that? I don't think I can single out one aspect of our offense that needs work. I think, you know, last year doesn't mean anything really to this year. This is a fresh slate. We got to refill the tank. We got to you know, toughness is not inherited just because we have a good offense on paper. That's not inherited. You know, we have a lot of great players, but we need to start refilling the tank now. Uh, you know, with these first couple of weeks is just mostly physical uh, preparation. But as we get into meetings, it's mental preparation. It's everyone knowing what to do, knowing how to do it, getting reps together and ascending into a week one performance that starts really fast. That is, you know, the number one goal that I'm thinking about right now. You know, it, it, it's interesting. A lot, the core, a lot of the core of this football team has been together for a while now. And not only that from a player standpoint, but from the coaching standpoint, you know, it's not like there's been a revolving door of coaches. So even though you've got guys that are, that are coming in, you know, new off the street as such in terms of veteran free agents, then you're going to have some rookies that'll be drafted, that'll be in the mix. So you have to go back to square one to indoctrinate everybody, you know, on, on the same page. But, boy, to have that much consistency and continuity in terms of players and coaches that are, you know, building those relationships over all that period of time with the players, how good is that? I think continuity is the rarest commodity in the National Football League. I think it's a big reason why New England had such a long run of success. They had, you know, a lot of guys have been doing it together. You know, they did it together for two decades. Right. Um you know, this is the first year for me in, in four years that I'm returning to the same team I played on in the previous season. Hmm. Very much going to take advantage of that. It's a it's a it's a way more comfortable feeling. Not that you're ever ultimately very comfortable in this business, but I have relationships with many people. You know, everyone in the building know the offense, and I really want to, you know, take a big step forward in my own personal play and my own personal performance, knowing that I don't have the early not obstacles, but early challenges of learning a culture, learning everyone's name, learning the offense, you know, being a new guy, not that, you know, that, that's, that's a fun challenge in and of itself. But I, th I think to be able to come back as, as this, as a center here, it's, it's going to be a, a re really a lot of fun and very enjoyable. We're going to take advantage of every opportunity that we get. You mentioned the Patriots and uh, you know, uh, Miami. I mean, you, you have been around some really good organizations you know, that have very good cultures and high character, you know, in terms of in the locker room from a player standpoint. How important has that been, do you think? I, You know, I, I haven't had many instances ever in my career with guys with low character. I think to make yeah. it in this league is very hard in general, and a lot of those guys would fizzle out before then if you had low character. Also, I've been on very good teams. Very, very grateful for the opportunities to be on the teams that I've played on. Met a lot of extraordinary men, lifelong friends, um, and it is very important. Guys that want to do the right thing. Um, and, you know, I'm very, very fortunate that we're on this team. I think we have a great high-character team. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's it's fun to be the kind of the older vet now. I'm 30 years old, uh, kind of observing how these young guys operate, but – but still, but still winning, winning a lot today in the weight room and in sprints. So happy about that. That's awesome. That's great. That's, that, <laughs> that's Ted Karras in a nutshell right there. You know, the interesting thing is, 
is to, uh, you know, when you, when you have an opportunity, like I do to kind of like stand back and, 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 uh, you know, outside looking in, uh, observing a little bit, there's no doubt you're a leader in the locker room, uh, because I mean, your energy and your, your vocal, but I mean, the fact that everybody's coming up to you, I mean, you're one of the, one of the focal points of, Oh man, let's catch up with each other. Everybody's like, Hey, Ted, what's up? Slapping your back, you know, shaking your hand. You're, you're definitely, uh, one of the, one of the kingpins in terms of leadership in this locker room. There's no doubt. But then there's so many too. That's, that's the cool thing about it. I mean, Alex Kappa has a, yep. you know, a contrasting leadership style to me, which is so valuable to our room. And yeah. now we're bringing in Orlando who has another even different style, but everyone's high energy and everyone's happy to see each other and really happy to be at work. I think energy enthusiasm are the two biggest factors for success in any industry, but football, especially with such a grind that it is, if, if you're not enjoying being there, uh, it's certainly going to reflect on your performance in the field. And <clears throat> this team, we really enjoy being in the building. Zach has set up an amazing schedule for us. Um, and, you know, the attendance speaks for itself, too. This is, uh, you know, everyone, everyone's here ready to go. Mostly everyone's here ready to go. And that's very exciting for a team that, you know, made a, made a late push in the playoffs, but ultimately didn't get it done. But now we're back ready to roll. It's funny, too. Uh, a lot of people uh, that, that – um don't know, you know, many professional football players, particularly offensive linemen, you know, their, their first knee jerk reaction is, Oh yeah, a bunch of big dummies. You know what these guys are. They're totally the opposite. I mean, the IQ, the football IQ of all the guys in the locker room uh, that are part of your group in the offensive line. It's, it's pretty darn strong in that regard too. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the uh, football intelligence, the overall intelligence of this group of young men, no question. No, it's very exciting. I, I love talking. To, I'll, I'll single out Alex Kappa because we kind of grew up. Obviously, he grew up California. I grew up central Indiana. That's very, very uh, dichotomous worldviews. And right. I think it's so valuable that we, you know, we we pose in the sauna after every day. We're starting a, a new thing these last two days. Just a thoughtful question of of you know different aspects of the world, and we just have different views. Everyone gets to voice their their opinion in a in a no pressure, low pressure environment. And, um, it's been a lot of fun so far. I'll tell you, that's impressive. That's all, all good stuff. I, I, I know it's only April, but man, it was good to see everybody. It was good to see everybody back. It was good to see the energy and the enthusiasm and the work ethic, uh, that was being shown in that locker room. Everybody excited to get to work. I mean, it was, it was really good. I, uh, it was, it was shot in the arm energy wise for everybody, including this old man. You know, I felt, uh, I felt a little, a little bit of an adrenaline rush. It was crazy, but good stuff, good fun. And you're a great, uh, a great source of information as always. Can't thank you enough, Ted, for uh, carving time for us as you have done and as you continue to do. And we'll be continuing to lean on you because you know of what you speak, sir. Oh, I'll be in the trenches. Don't worry. We're, we're going to be here <laughs> many times this upcoming year. It's going to be a big year. So very excited. Sounds like a plan, sir. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.